Hello everybody, tonight I'm going to be going through the process of installing Octoprint on a very generic laptop. This one here is an Acer Aspire E1. It has an Intel Celeron processor, 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of spinning rust, decent display, wireless, battery, very generic. Uh, the version of Linux I have installed is called Linux Mint. It's version 19, 64 bit. Um, I recommend installing Linux Mint uh, for a few different reasons. Uh, one, the driver support is halfway decent. Uh, printers install very nicely. The out of the box key short key uh, keyboard shortcuts. They're very similar to Windows. You can easily modify them if they're not exactly like lo uh, lock screen is Windows key Shift L, for example, instead of Windows key L. You can easily change that if you need to. Many, many of the keys are very very similar, so if you're jumping between computers, it makes it a little easier to work with it. Uh, it's not like GNOME or it's a vastly different experience. If you want a vastly different experience, go right ahead. Um, to start out, for installing uh, Octoprint, you're going to want to make sure your system is up to date. As you can see here, these are the list of commands that I've run to get the computer set up to the point where I am going to show you. Uh, sudo apt update, that's going to update your package, all the repositories. Uh, it'll give you uh, all of the list of like the packages you want to need to install. Then you need to run sudo apt upgrade. Uh, there's a special thing that will actually give you the list of things to install. Uh, the other command will get it, everything up to, up to date for you, or at least get things ready for you to update. Uh, the third command here is actually installing the packages. The first two are going to probably take probably five, ten minutes to update. This third thing, probably another five minutes. Python 2.7 is required for Octoprint. It is written in the older version of Python. Uh, you will need the dev packages as well, which is that second command here. Uh, Python pip will be required for installing get is required to download the repository that you will be using for Octoprint. Uh, I would recommend using the repository because then if you need to pull down changes you can pull them down and recompile all your changes. Uh, the installed documentation tells you to use virtual env. Uh, I'm not 100% sure exactly what this does but I use it to install multiple versions of Octoprint. Uh, you can only install or you can only have one printer hooked up to Octoprint and printing at a time. So you can have multiple printers and have one Octoprint, but you can only print to one printer at a time with that. Uh, you'd have to install multiple versions to get that to work. Uh, I'm going to also show you how to set up multiple versions, which is a nice thing to have. Uh, your fourth step here is going to be cloning the repository. Uh, th this all depends on your internet speed. Uh, it should should be very quick. It's a, not very. It's not a very big application. Uh, once that is completed, the fifth step is to change directory into Octoprint. Uh, the thing after that will be installing virtual n env, virtual env, and then the second part to the command is uh, whatever you want to actually name it. Uh, you can see here I have a misspelling. I must have accidentally deleted a character. Uh, this uh, first one I did it as test, uh, just as a test here. Uh, once that's completed, you run sla dot slash test bin pip space install space dot, which tells it to install in that directory. Uh, create another virtual environment, do the same thing. And then once that's all done, you'll be ready to set it up to run on boot. Uh, none of the documentation really tells you exactly how to do this. It's very good. It's going to be very dependent on your distribution. Uh, since this is a Debian based Ubuntu slash Ubuntu based uh, distribution, um, this command right here will be uh, what you'll need. Uh, at reboot, I've actually never used that before. I've always had to set something up for, you know, run every five minutes or run once an hour or whatever. So not really familiar with this, but this 
does it on a reboot or boot. So like if your computer is off and you hit the power button, these commands will run when the computer is booted. Uh, as you can see, the second option here, I have it set to run at a different port. Uh, this, will, this is how you set it up to run multiple versions. First one I have it running is the default port, which is port 5000. The second one I have it is 5001. So once that's all good, once you, once you have all that installed, you just reboot your computer. And then once you come back to the, the login, login, and then you'll want to open up a browser. Uh, as you can see here, I have both versions of Octoprint running. Uh, you have to go through all the steps of setting it up and uh, set it up for each of your printers. Uh, th there are ways of forcing a uh, USB to stick to a certain USB port. Uh, sometimes they'll switch around. So if you're trying to get something to work, just remember that uh, unplugging a USB and plugging it back in might change the ID number. Uh, in Octoprint, there's a uh, there's like a drop down when you're connecting. Uh, all of the all of the uh, what are they called uh, serial adapters that you would have attached to the computer. Each printer will have a serial adapter to connect to it, and sometimes those will move around. So if you're having troubles, just make sure that the printer that you're trying to connect to is the printer you're connecting to. There's ways of making that stick. However, it's a more advanced process. The final step is you're going to want to keep your settings so your computer doesn't go to sleep when it's inactive or completely turn off. Uh, I would suggest also turning off suspending when the lid is closed. Uh, if you're all done working on something and you want to make sure it, the computer turns off when it's done, you know, like if, you, if you're done printing and you want your computer to turn off, you can just close the lid. That's an option. Uh, however, if you accidentally close the lid or if you have to move it for whatever reason, it's usually safer to close the lid of a laptop and then move it around so you're not dropping it and breaking your screen, for, for example. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you can just send them in the uh, comment section below. And uh, Thank you for watching. All right, bye.